Oh look, the lift stock is dropping. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and yeah, we're talking about lift stock again. We're just gonna jump right into this one because as you can see, the lift stock is not doing very well. It has lost, at least according to this chart, 11.85% of its value, although apparently, according to another article, it's lost a little bit more than that. As you can see, it started out high. It started out higher than what they were anticipating, but it's just kind of been going down ever since. It has a few little bumps where it goes up, but this is not an encouraging sign for a unicorn stock. And for those of you who don't know what the term unicorn means in the stock market, it is reference to a stock that goes way beyond what you would reasonably expect a stock to go. For example, some people might spend $10,000 on $10 shares of stock and be happy if it reaches $25. You know, you've doubled your money back, if not more so. But a unicorn stock is when you spend like $100 in on $10 shares of stocks. And then you see those stocks over the course of time go to like over 500, 800, 1,000, 2,000 shares of stock, and it's grown. That's why they have a lot of those stories like if you invested this much into Microsoft at this point, or if you invested this much into Apple or this much into Amazon, you would be this amount millionaire. And you never know what's gonna be a unicorn. In one of the last videos that I made about this, I talked about Priceline, how at one point the stock was trading for $2 a share. Didn't seem like it was gonna be a unicorn stock, but then they rebranded themselves as Booking Holdings or Book Holdings, whatever it was. And now their stock is worth almost $2,000 a share. And trust me, if you had spent $100,000 on $2 shares of Priceline, you would be a very, very happy man right now. Or woman, you know, because women buy stocks too. Um, don't want to be sexist. And, well, the media, who has been skeptical about this the whole time, is not particularly happy. As this um, Bloomberg article says, lift tumbling stock is a worrying sign for other unicorns. And, uh, see, this says shares have fallen as much as 21% since trading debut. Um, so, that's... Uh, they, that's their math. So anyway, they said, Lyft fell below its initial public offering of $70 a share on its second day of trading and an oh, omnima sign for the stampede of unicorn companies planning to follow the ride-hailing business to the stock market this year. The IPO has become a sort of test case, not just for Lyft or rival Uber Technologies Inc., but for a glut of highly valued startups like Pinterest, Postmates Inc., and Slack Technologies Inc. that have signaled plans to list this year. Getting Wall Street hyped for an IPO is a practiced science, but managing expectations after a public offering is a game of market psychology that Lyft and its underwriters saw turn against them on Monday, said David Erickson, a finance professor at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School. Quote, I was surprised that it blew through the IPO price so quickly, he said. While there was a lot of enthusiasm on Friday, it's obviously been dampened today, and it's hard to recreate that moment once you lose it in the near term. Now keep in mind, he said in the near term because near term failures turn into long term successes sometimes. Lyft worked hard to drum up the excitement ahead of last week's offering. It told prospective investors on the second day of a well attended roadshow that the deal was oversubscribed. It was priced, it raised price expectations from a range of $62 to $68 a share, finally opting for $72. On Friday, the shares opened on the NASDAQ global market at about $80. $7, 21% above the IPO price. By the closing trading that day, the price was down to 78. Lyft continued to fall Monday to as low as 69.12. You can't read too much in the first days of trading. It took Snap Inc. four months to dip beneath $17 a share IPO price, and it's still below that threshold. Facebook Inc. dropped below its IPO dry price on the second day of trading and had a rocky first year on the market before the stock took off. This is true. Um, Lyft worked with J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, which led to the offering of the credit sussy. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, let's see here. Lyft is a model of the unicorn class of companies that secured valuations in excess of $1 billion from private investors and will soon seek validation from the public. These are high-growth companies with even higher propensities to burn through capital, and they're built around compelling narratives of world-altering potential. Lyft has said it can fundamentally alter transportation and eventually usher in a world of self-driving cars. No, they can't. The same can be said of Uber. No, they can't. 
which is expected to publicly file paperwork for its own IPO this month. Slack makes similar promises of reinventing how workers communicate and Postmates of how people shop for food and other goods. Look, I, here's the thing with Slack. I'm just going to say this right now. I, I love Slack. I made a couple videos about how much I love Slack. But Slack is essentially AOL chat for the new millennium. It's really no different and it's sort of like a more private version of Facebook Messenger. So I don't know why they think that's going to be a billion dollar valued company, but whatever. Such story driven stocks tend to be volatile and polarizing among investors, said Jake Fuller, managing director of equities research at Gunningheim Securities LLC. People kind of shake out on one side or the other on the other debate. At the center of the debate is how to value a company that lost almost one billion last year. <laughs> After, even after the declines, the market still values lift above its last private valuation. On a price to sales basis, lift's market cap far exceeds that of other inner companies, wrote Mandeep Singh, an analyst for Bloomberg Intelligence. The reality is setting in, he wrote, the valuation is too high for lift. So, yeah, let's go back over here. Let's just look at that again. So, by the time I finally buy lift stock, maybe it'll be like less than $50. That would be very, very nice. So, here's the thing. I don't know if I'm going to be doing daily stock updates. I think that's kind of redundant, to be honest. But I think the point is being made with at least weekly updates for the most part. Uh, the Lyft stock is taking a tumble right now. Um, the high it was was 85.43. The low was 68.58. So it's a little above the low. Um, but we will need more time to see how this works. I think the next couple weeks are going to be brutal. I think the next few months will be brutal. So... Who knows, depending how the stock is just falling, I might even elect not to buy stock right away. You know, if it just goes down, 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 I, I might just wait till it gets to $10 a share and then maybe I'll invest $200 and just see what kind of happens at that point. But this is why you need to be careful. Stock market is a little volatile. It goes up and down. Uh, if the service could ever be, if their core service should ever be profitable, then it could turn into a unicorn, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. That's why they're opening things like banks and um, service centers and scooters. Those scooters. Like, you know, I doubt the scooters are going to be a big deal, but you know, they're looking for other ways to make money because they are not making it with rideshare. Rideshare is a money losing pit. It doesn't have to be, of course, if they price it reasonably and everyone gets their fair share, then you know what? It could be very profitable. But would like they be booking like two billion rides if it was priced the way it was supposed to be priced i mean look and bef i know some people say well they're trying to get volume and they're trying to get people to sign up and use services like yeah but at some point you have to start making money they got three million people to sign up for this very very quickly but we all know what's happening there and they're still around of course but it's not what it used to be and they couldn't offer that deal forever the unlimited movies so that's Uber and Lyft. Reality is starting to settle in. I mean, another reason this could be failing, though, it should be mentioned, is because of Uber. Some companies might still believe in the rideshare model, but why invest in Lyft when you know Uber is around the corner? It's very possible. So, you know, that's probably where we're going to have to leave it. I, um, I'm going to have fun watching this one. I really am. This is going to be a very interesting ride. In the meantime, oh, <laughs> I just noticed this. A customer service number. So everyone, there's your customer service number if you want to call Lyft. Just figured I'd point that out. Anyway, you know the drill now at this point. What do you think? Have you bought shares in Lyft? Are you having a bad day? I'd love to know. So comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you like my content and really enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, check out my Entrepreneur Vlogs channel. More content is coming there soon. And if you want to chat with me and other rideshare drivers, seek out my Entrepreneur Hangouts Facebook group. You have to be approved to join, but we've been approving most people. As long as you behave, you, you can stay there. Otherwise, flame responsibly. Have a good one.